Wisconsin's abortion fight a step closer to the state Supreme Court this weekend. As expected, Dane County Circuit Court Judge Diane Schlipper said this past week, Wisconsin's 1849 law does not apply to abortions. In response, Sheboygan County District Attor Attorney Joel Ermanski said he will quickly appeal the decision, which is expected to make it to the high court. A new and somewhat contentious state Supreme Court with Justice Janet Protasiewicz winning and flipping the court's 4-3 majority from conservative to liberal. And that's where we begin our new conversation with former Justice Janine Geske, who was first appointed to the court by former Governor Tommy Thompson. When you look at the current court, can you say the current court is impartial, as you just mentioned? Well, I think they're impartial. Uh, you know, you, you will see a lot of the cases that you don't see publicity over. You know, they'll be six-one, or they'll be unanimous, or they. But um, you know, it, it does appear on these politically charged cases that often it, you know, I. They kind of wind up where people think they're going to wind up. But, you know, Judge Hagedorn is an example that people thought he would be one place, and sometimes he's not. And, um, you know, I, I've told him, I think, you know, I admire him, and I think that, you know, that's a sign of a judge. Sometimes you're going to anger your supporters because the law doesn't require it. I'm assuming you talk with a number of current justices uh, still. What is it like behind the scenes? There's been a lot of attention on this court already. Yeah, I think they've got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, the, unfortunately, the court itself became um, um, a little dysfunctional, I think, is the best way to describe it. And, um, you know, there's always conflict on Supreme Courts because there are a lot of big egos. I was one of them. And, you know, that's going to happen. And it, and it happens to every state. But, but usually you try to keep it within the court, and a lot of it spilled out into the public. Um, and it takes a lot to be able to get back into a relationship. And so, you know, I'm hoping that over the next year or two that they will settle down and, and hopefully be able to be more collaborative. But I was at a judicial conference two weeks ago and everybody was there and people talked to each other. And so, you know, I think they're getting there. We sometimes are in a moment where the ne every next election is the biggest election of our lifetime. Every case that they hear is the biggest case of our lifetime. But when we look at this next year in terms of potential cases, maps, abortion, potentially Act 10, is this a big year f potentially for the court? Well, you know, it is a big year because um, what's happening are progressive groups, Democrats or liberal groups are trying to get the court to relook at everything that the court has done historically. That's happening at the United States Supreme Court too, and we've seen that happen on a number, you know, Roe v. Wade and lots of other things where it's been precedent forever and suddenly, you know, there are new justices and the arguments being made. But to have all these big issues, school choice is another one that's coming up. And um, I, I, I think if, you know, and I don't know where they'll all land. I mean, I suspect some of them um, are the court won't take. And if the court doesn't take it, then the precedent stands. But the potential is there that if all those issues get argued at the court, it, it'll be an important year. Up next, Christmas tree controversy.